Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm, and today I wanted to catch you up on my current propagation projects. I'm propagating perennials and shrubs, including but not limited to roses, and I'm doing them under these humidity domes here. I'll give you a shot right now of my island of humidity domes in the downstairs room. There's some things I really like about propagating under these domes. For one thing, they're modular, and you can do them at a small scale, or you can scale them up just by adding more domes. The other thing is that you don't have to attend to your cuttings all that often. I usually go in there and check on them once a day. They maintain a good steady amount of humidity around the cuttings. I have them on a bench that has some bottom heat at times. Right now it's not necessary because the season has caught up with us and now we have good propagation temperatures. But early on I can do this indoors under control temperatures where I have my best chance of doing that. And even though I have greenhouses and I have uh, misting benches, uh, this is a much more reliable way to start it first thing in the season because of those controlled temperatures. Now I thought I might start out in kind of a weird reverse order here and show you some of the results of the cuttings I've already been doing and then I'll show you the method that I'm using to take more cuttings. I'll show you some other varieties as well. A quick overview of the setup here. You can see that we have a whole bunch of these domes set up on these tables here and these are just folding resin tables but I've placed a skirt across the bottom here. This skirt just made of poly. Uh, that does two things. One of course if we're misting or watering here. Uh, we have the trays at the bottoms of the domes, but we also have then the plastic to stop moisture from uh, dripping and going down onto the floor or the tables underneath. And second thing is that if you're heating underneath that table, that the skirt traps that heat. Now these ones are all filled with plants and these ones here I'm just about to fill. I'll start with that on the video today and let's get a look inside of these domes to see what's going on in there. I'm taking the lid off the first two here and I just wanted to show you as I look at the one in the background there that you can actually see humidity dripping down on the inside or condensation dripping on the inside of the domes and that's actually what I want to see if if these at any point don't show up with any condensation on the inside that tells me that I haven't given them enough moisture and it's time to mist inside so I have this little misting nozzle at the back and the plants in the first tray here are dianthus, which in fact are just like the dianthus that you see in that little pot there. Uh, I've taken cuttings of those and let's have a quick look and see if they've started to root yet. They've been in the tray for about three weeks. And pulling on here, yeah, I feel resistance coming back here now. They always say don't disturb your cuttings before they've rooted or even after they've rooted because you could damage the little roots. So I'm going to break that rule and pull this up so you can see what those roots kind of look like. And you can see that they pull up a bunch of soil with them and it has, you know, I would say a reasonable amount of roots across the base there. Next tray over has two more perennials in it. This one is Hebe and this one is Lavender. I do a fair bit of Lavender here on the farm just because it themes quite nicely with roses. Now here's a, uh, a cautionary tale. When I pull up on the Hebe here, you're going to see that the rooting is like ever so light. Hang on, I'll see if I can get that to zoom in there. But the, it's just the lightest bit of rooting on there. However, if I try to pull up on the lavender, it's fully rooted. In fact, it'll pull up the whole plug. So this turns out to be a bad combination in the two trays, in the tray together, to have the two varieties in there together. Um, it's not fatal. I'll just leave it under the dome for a little while longer and wait for the Hebe to root. Uh, but uh, typically, I just do one variety per tray. That way I can be sure that it's all going to happen at roughly the same timing. Third tray over and I have two more things. I have another variety of lavender, which is again all pulling back right now. And then I have a variety of dappled willow. Or this is a willow and willows should be super easy to root. And yes, that proves to be so. Now one thing that I will mention about the dome method that's probably a disadvantage compared to a mist system is that any dead material that's in here, any leaves that drop to the bottom or any stems that die, will start to rot very quickly. And you can see here, and it's just as important that you see my failures as my successes, 
uh, maybe even more so, that this one here has started to rot from the bottom up. So if I left it in there, it would end up getting fuzzy and spreading mold or fungus to the rest of the tray very, very quickly. So it's important that you remove your deads very quickly. And yet a fourth tray of perennials here, and this first one here is called Agastache, or a licorice mint is another name for it, or hummingbird mint. And once again, you can see uh, good rooting on this one, just two, two to three weeks out of the gate, so very, very quick. And the other one on the other side of the tray here is Gara. And I actually feel some roots on that as well. Let's see, it doesn't feel as, as heavily rooted, but once again, it has a decent set of roots on it just after two to three weeks. And you can also see here that uh, I've been vigilant about pulling dead ones because this one rotted beside it, pulled it out so it doesn't go ahead and infect the rest of the tray. So what all did we have under those domes then? Well, we had the Dianthus here. We had lavender like this one, Agastache. We have the Gara from the garden. We had that Hebe, which I don't have an example of here. And we also have Dappled Willow. So what is that? Five perennials and one shrub, all taken within the same time frame all rooted or rooting and all taken from the exact same method. I am gonna get you some real good close-ups here can we, so we can zoom in, but for now, I'm just gonna show you that the basic idea is to take a stem off of the plant and cut just below a set of leaves. We call that spot a node, and you cut above just another set of leaves as well. So what you're leaving is a stem that has at least a node at the bottom and a node at the top, and it can have more than one node there, but in this case, I'm just leaving uh, two nodes. So one at the bottom, one at the top, and I'm trimming down the foliage just a little bit to have it fit that cell in the tray. I'm gonna dip it in rooting hormone and then stick it into the tray. I'm gonna give you a minute on soil preparation in the tray in just a second here, but I just wanted to show you first that really the method is the same on all of these different plants. The only thing that really changes is that the plant may have different lengths between the nodes. So the Agastache here tends to have quite a bit of space between one node and the next, while the lavender are stacked right up against each other. So what you end up with on the lavender is you might even take something with two or three nodes on it, but it's a much shorter cutting, and you can stick that one with the same method. Once again, just dipping it in a little bit of rooting hormone. The hormone I'm using is either 0.1% IBA or around 0.3 or 0.4% IBA. So it's a low to medium strength rooting hormone for taking semi-hardwood cuttings. You would use a stronger hormone for say hardwood cuttings of trees and that kind of thing. So once again, you dip that and then stick it into the potting soil. A dianthus, exactly the same method. So here, again, we just cut off the flower and cut below a node and above a node, and then you have a cutting that you can dip in the rooting hormone and then stick in the tray. Before we get to sticking those cuttings, I'm trying to anticipate what kind of questions you could have about this potting mix. So this potting mix or propagation mix is made out of peat and perlite and the brand that I'm using is Promix. Now you can use peat free and I know a lot of people prefer that. So there's no problem with that as long as it is a specifically engineered potting mix. You can see this, this one has uh, those little white bits of perlite in it. Those help to give it good air holding capacity and good drainage. And so the rest of it could be core or coconut fiber, it could be wood fiber, whatever they've engineered it from, that's good. Now what I'm doing is I'm loading it into this cell tray and I find that for perennials, a 72 cell tray like this one actually does a good job of giving them enough room to grow and to root without you having to change trays super quickly and for most sizes of cuttings they will fit beside each other pretty comfortably in this tray now i'm actually just pushing it into the cells but you can see i'm not i'm not jamming it in i'm actually just pushing it straight across the top and firming it up slightly so that it has enough tension or enough i guess uh, compaction to hold the cutting well when it goes in, but not enough that I'm really jamming it in there so that it's going to interfere with the drainage qualities of the uh, medium. So that's kind of a fine line here. If it has larger chunks like this, like wood in there, which it sometimes does, you can just throw those out. And once you've got that filled across the top here, then you can go ahead and stick your cuttings. I'll mention one other thing here, which is just about the moisture of the soil. And you can see here, 
um, that when I have it in my hand here, I can form a ball and it kind of holds its shape, which means it's moist, but when I squeeze it, I really don't get any amount of water coming out of it. So that's kind of the right level of moisture for a peat and perlite based mix, and it may vary a little bit. And I think that's about right. When it comes to sticking the cuttings themselves, it's just as easy as pushing them down into the center of that cell. And because I haven't packed that soil heavy, it should stick in fairly easily, but stay upright when you press it around a little bit. Uh, that's the Agastache cutting I have there. Remember, I've dipped that one already. So there's two Agastache cuttings. Uh, this one is a Dianthus. Now, of course, I would never mix a tray like this. We'll have the Agastache here and the Dianthus there. Uh, so tightly to each other with having multiple varieties just because I'm so likely to get confused uh, if I haven't dipped them already. And by the way, this is the dappled willow. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and dip that, although it's it's questionable whether you would even need rooting hormone on something that roots as easily as willow. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and dip that just for demonstration here. And I wouldn't keep them all close like this. At most, usually what I would do is split the tray down the middle and then put one variety on one side and one on the other, although you've already seen the disadvantages of that happening too. Once they're stuck into the soil here and firm like this, then you would stick them onto the bottom tray of that humidity dome, give them a mist, give a mist to the inside of the tray, and then close it up and let it develop that condensation. Put in the right temperatures under those lights, and you should be able to get rooting within two to three weeks as shown. Well, taking cuttings of roses just has to be more complicated than that, right? Well, actually, no. These are exactly the same style of cuttings taken from semi-hardwood growth, same year's growth, uh, stuck in some rooting hormone, uh, cut below a node, above a node, stuck into the same soil, under the same domes, at the same temperature for the same length of time, and you still end up with some rooting on them. Speaking of that temperature, the ideal temperature for rooting roses and the other perennials done really well at about 22 degrees Celsius, which is about 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, same cautions as the perennials. If you end up seeing something that is a darkened stem or a brown stem, you should take that out of there before it spreads the rot to the other varieties. Now, it turns out that this whole tray here came to me from a trading partner down in the U.S. for some varieties that we don't readily have in Canada. So that's kind of exciting for me. And let's see how they've done rooting. And maybe this can serve as an update for the... Uh, for the trading partner as well. Uh, thanks so much to him for sending them. But I see here, and I hope you can see as well, that I have roots down to the whole bottom of the plug here on the variety uh, Summer Song, which is uh, very exciting to me. And I think something like 44 out of the 46 varieties have all rooted. So that's super exciting. Now, uh, normally I do the roses in a 32 cell like this here, and uh, only for the minis, and these are mini roses here, they can go into the same 72 cell row, uh, trays as the perennials did. And let's just see if any of my uh, mini roses, again, taken about two weeks. And yeah, they have a decent amount of little roots across the bottom there. So yeah, we're getting rooting from both of these trays here. And again, this is my first three weeks or so of propagation. So once these are all fully rooted, I will empty out the trays and then put more roses in their place. Okay, as promised, a round of rose propagation. You can see that I've upgraded to the 32 cell trays here and my designated victim today is Arthur Bell, probably one of the most requested roses of my season so far. So you gotta give the people what they want. Obviously, I absolutely pillaged the mother shrub here, trying to get those 32 cuttings, but it'll be good for next year. So let's pull out a stem here and see what we've got. So, the right stage to pull them off of the shrub is again this year's growth and you're looking for a part or a stem that is either blooming now or just about to bloom or just finished blooming so that's about the right stage to look at them and you're looking for the right firmness of wood that's a little bit soft certainly very soft at the top here uh, but i'm checking for firmness i'm checking for its ability to bend without breaking and i don't want it to be super hard the stuff at the bottom here is probably okay for a cutting so i'm going to take a cut right there and that was below a node and a cut right here which is above a node i'll get you some close-ups of this as well once again just trimmed down some of the foliage there uh, go ahead and dip in the rooting hormone top it off and stick it into the cell 
same as for the perennials. I'm going to repeat the process a little bit here. Maybe I won't do all 32 on camera, but in this case I'm giving it uh, three nodes, one at the bottom, one in the middle, one on the top, stripping the leaves off the bottom one. You don't want the bottom leaves to be under the soil and stripping off some of the foliage just to reduce stress on the cutting. And then again, dip, tap, and stick. And again, I don't only have this packed firmly enough that they stand upright in it uh, without dropping loosely. And that's about it. Let's do one more stem here. Uh, want it to be two. And once again, I think the bottom here is fine. I took the cutting at the bottom here at the heel where it exits the other stem. So that'll be just fine. I'll leave that cut exactly where it is. Take a cut here at the top, trim off some leaves, trim off some leaves and dip and stick. And then under the dome, under the mist, and in two to three weeks, I should either see some strong callusing or some rooting by that point. I know I've done rose propagation before on camera, but I'm happy to answer any questions on this or the propagation of perennials using the dome or humidity dome method, which is hardly something that I've invented. It's, it's been around for a long while, but I'm certainly happy to go into the details with you. If you have any questions, drop those down below in the comments of the video. I'll see what I can do to help.